guys. So, I'm back. Uh, we're going to do an unboxing today. Scratch that. Alright guys, I'm back. So today we're going to do an unboxing. Um, and I've got a little, little something like an intermission I want to do. You know, if y'all like it, maybe we'll do it often. So, anyway, this is what we're going to be opening today. It is a benchtop abrasive blaster. Now, I've been wanting one of these for a while for blasting off scales on things like my Scorpion bottle openers, on roses, stuff that when you take over to the wire wheel, it has a tendency to catch and throw out of your hands. Uh, I don't particularly like that, and when I'm trying to get up in this area with the wire wheel, you either can't or it can be dangerous. So today be a video in and of itself. So let's get going. Alright, so this is a 28.6 pound capacity. It's got a 3.1 uh, cubic foot work area. It's got a 40 to 100 psi working pressure and 5 to 9 CFM air consumption. I'm not sure what that last one means, but I have a compressor that should be plenty for it. impressions I'm pretty excited about this I've been uh, wanting one of these for a while now and just haven't been able to get one for various different reasons um, but I am very excited now this is the first time opening it uh, and it looks like it's pretty much all put together I thought I was gonna have to do a, some assembly I may still have to, but let's get this plastic off first. From uh, it was a toss-up between Tractor Supply or Harbor Freight, and I will tell you the big main deciding factor in between this one and the one at Harbor Freight. Uh, I think the one at Harbor Freight was a touch bigger but I am not looking to do huge things in it and I do not have a whole lot of room for one that Harbor Freight sells um, I think had a light but it was only a small one on the side unless they've changed something since I last looked at them but I was, I'm pretty sure it's still the same so. All right. so let's see here So, first impressions is the one that I looked at, or videos I watched at, at Har the, of the one at Harbor Freight, is the person had to go through and put it together and do a lot of um, sealing with silicone. Um, this one looks like it's had quite a bit. I mean, you can see excess silicone it looks like it's sealed up pretty good uh, ooh, but that's just me looking at it Let's see if I can figure this tripod out so I won't do that again. all right that's just me looking at it from uh, I guess a layman's perspective I don't know anything about it Let's look at the instructions so 
that's what we're going to do. All right. This is the registration. Free lifetime technical support. All right. Assembly and operating instructions. So let's take a look here. Now that's interesting because the box and the tag said it had like a 28 pound capacity. This one says it has a 32 pound package contents. So that must be this package. Let's get this open, make sure we got everything we need. These are the little consumable blast tips right here. Some Teflon tape. This must be some kind of dust collector port. Oh. This must be the plug for the light, which has a on off switch over here and then the gun so there we go and it's got a blast cabinet four assorted ceramic dust collector port which is either this thing or the thing that's in it and hopper and screen which is this thing over here so this has no type of assembly instructions. Here's under assembly. Refer to the parts diagram and parts list to assist with assembly. All right. Peel the thin plastic. Attach air hose to the air tube to the blast gun. Place the air hose inside the cabinet with the long end facing the back. Attach the air hose to the connect air hose. Okay, that's about as clear as mud. So, thinking this here is for the air hose, and this here is what sucks up the dust or the abrasive. All right, so I am going to see if I can make sure, because the assembly instructions kind of stink. I'm not going to tell a lie, but I am going to make sure I'm putting this all together right, which will consist of me looking up a YouTube video. Um, all right, guys, I'm back. So, one thing across the board I'm seeing with these um, is that was bi the big complaint with it, or I guess not really big, but the main concern is there's not really any instructions other than what I showed you. But what we got here is, well, let me, let me take it back apart. I haven't sealed it up, and we'll do it together. So, this here, oh, woo, what's going on here? There we go. Sorry about that. Having some uh, technical difficulties today. But, so this comes right like this. And it goes in a hole down here. See my little finger coming out there? And this here is where you put your air hose end connector to. So what we're going to do, set this aside, and probably after I get this all, because they create dust, that's just what they do, but if you can do something to remedy not having as much dust, well then you might as well do it. So I'm going to put some 
Teflon tape around these threads because you know it is air line so we want to make sure we don't got leaks because you know, leaks is never good so go there yeah, dummy pull these gloves out which the gloves everything was already installed them only thing that isn't installed is the gun and then a little filter back there I'll show y'all in a minute but see if we can't get you up here get you a bird's eye view here we go. so down here in the bottom hopefully y'all can see this this right here is where your media is sucked up in through now watching Chandler Dickerson's old video he put it out four years ago when he first got his they mod they changed this his wasn't uh it, the bottom wasn't shaped coming in from all sides it was only front to back so his had a bar that run across the bottom this one has this and it's all sloped to the middle so what we're going to do take this put it in that and what this also does down here is if I ever want to drain lower that without making too much of a fuss we're going to take this here alright I swear guys sometimes technology just doesn't like me Out. Now it does. These are little replacement screens, and I have already scuffed them up, but that's all right. We're going to just set these over here. And instead of replacing the entire top glass, you just replace that screen, and it gives you a clearer view. So now we're going to install the final thing on this. on the back all right Let's see if we can get you. so this is an air inlet or exhaust port one of the two I think it's an air inlet or exhaust I, I don't know but you put it on here and you spin it and then same thing that Chandler said it's not very sturdy I mean so what I'm gonna do is try some two-sided tape some clear tape I've got just to kind of seal it up and hold it there I'll be right back and back let's do this here you don't want to see my pretty mug don't you This is just some two-sided tape I've got, and we're going to put it here at the top. I bought this whole box of tapes at an auction, and uh, it's been pretty interesting because some of it's really good and some of it isn't. In the process of figuring this out, this stuff normally would have a protective top layer over this and it doesn't but trying to make do with it main reason I bought all the stuff at the auction is the amount of electrical tape not electrical tape masking tape that was in the box that this all came in and knife makers you know what I'm talking about we use electrical tape like crazy taping all kinds of blades up when you don't want to scuff them up just various things like that so all right let's see here peel that off there there we go all right so we can gingerly put this on with a 
out of sealing the tape just yet. And push it on there. All right. So it definitely does. I don't want to. I hope y'all got that right there. So I don't want to silicone it. Because if I ever want to change out that filter, I mean, it kind of makes it impossible. You have to cut it. And then you just end up with a whole big mess over there. Oh! Y'all went down. I swear this tripod is out to get me today. Front leg keeps coming unclicked. Anyway, what I was saying, I don't really want to silicone it. Because then, if I ever replace it, I have to cut the silicone away and everything. I might tape it. We'll just see. Um, Jeremy off Simple Little Life has a inlet some I've, it's, it's his is on the back I don't know if it's that same area but get that out of there. his uh, he's got to where his dust collector hooks up or his shop back hooks up to it and it, he loses some media but he says it's well worth it to keep the dust down so that is definitely something we're going to look into. All right, guys. So I did end up looking into it and flipping the grate over. I hope you can see. I'm trying to give y'all kind of a bird's eye view. This was is designed to go down and kind of be a brace from it. Um, in Chandler Dickerson's video, he took the grate completely out. I may end up doing it, but for right now, we're just going to leave it in. I've got some of this black diamond coal slag. Uh, it comes in different grits. This one is 5 16 1630. I have 5 16 I think, maybe the nozzle minimum, if you read that correctly. But let's see. We'll go ahead and. Put some of this in here. That looks to be. So, we got the air hose hooked up. Oh, right there. So, what we're going to do here. Go ahead and drop them puppies in there. Get ready. All right, guys. So I told you at the beginning of the video that there was going to be a brief intermission, something I think y'all will enjoy. Um, I hope you enjoy because I like doing things like this. And what that is, is trying new things. Um, in this case, we're going to be trying sour cream and onion crickets uh, me and my family for Thanksgiving went to visit my dad in Florida and we stopped at a place called Peach World on the way down and on the way back but on the way down I seen these things and I just had to get them none of my other family wants to try them with me I've heard that they taste just like sunflowers but we will see um, I've never been really shy about trying anything I've eating crickets and grasshoppers raw when I was a kid to make everybody laugh but this is like a legit thing so what we're gonna do is try them um, and I hope y'all like it and if y'all like it and you have something you want me to try as long as it's meant to be eaten then we might give it a go but here you go little tiny cricket Doesn't really have a smell to it. Doesn't really have much of a flavor to it either. I can see where people say it tastes like a sunflower seed. But I mean, they're just kind of, I don't know, like this crunchy hint of sun, sour cream and onion-ness. I don't know. There's no little leg there. Little face. 
Mm. They're interesting. I wouldn't really just buy them though. This is not like, you know, they're not like a Pringles. Once you have one, you just can't stop. Or no, once you pop, you just can't stop. Um, I am going to see if I can get my little boy to try one. If I do, I will definitely put it in the video. All right, go ahead. Chew it up. <laughs> Being dramatic. Tear his head off. No, and just eat his body. No, just pop it all in. There you go. Chew it up. <laughs> oh. It was disgusting. What does it taste like, Anna? That next. What? Rotten eggs. No, it does Let not. Say, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, swallow it down. <laughs> Go for it, Anna. <laughs> what? Um, because they're not they're not bad. They're not nasty, but they're not. They're not like, oh man, I gotta go out and buy me some crickets type of thing. <laughs> oh, but now we'll get back to your regularly scheduled TV show. Airs on. This is a rather interesting type feeling here. But yeah, see, that's why he took it out. It kind of restricts how the um, hose moves, but let me uh go cut that compressor off and we'll come back and look at it. Let's open this thing up. Whoo! All right, definitely doing a pretty good job. All right, so I didn't, I didn't do the whole thing, just to kind of show some contrast. But there's the clean stuff compared to the dirty stuff. Here on the back, there's that. So I think that's going to give a really good look to some of the stuff. I would even probably make a pretty nice finish to a knife. Speaking of that, I'm going to finish this off and we'll do the knife. If you don't remember the knife, this will be before on the knife. Now, it hasn't been bevels ground or heat treated or anything like that. This, um, at this point, has only been annealed. So, to make it easier to clean up in this area with a file. But, we're going to finish these two up. And then I'll come back to you. So, here is the bottle opener. And it, it's crazy because before you sandblasted this thing, you didn't see like the really bad mishit right there. Um, you, you definitely get to see a lot more of it. There's still some scale there and a little bit underneath there but that I can put a light coat of, light coat of matte black on there. I'm curious to see how it would look with clear coat. We may try that before the video is over with just to see because when I wire wheel them I like to give them that clear coat but that may be look pretty cool with clear coat. We will see. And then the knife. There's the knife, and as you can see, I mean, that's some of the heavy forged scale that come from me putting it in the coals, the le the clinkers and junk like that, hot to anneal it and let it set. So, I mean, ultimately, with this, your finish is going to be as good as your forging. Um, if you forge it fairly clean, um, you know, not have miss hits on it and everything, then when you uh, blast it, it's going to be pretty clean. 
looking afterwards. So, I mean, if you keep it clean and brush your work and everything, when you hit it with the blaster, one, you're not going to have to sandblast it nowhere near as long, and two, it's going to be easier and give you a nicer finish. So, anyway, let's zip on over here. One thing I did want to talk about, I did, I almost forgot, is, so, if you look down in here and see how the sand's kind of made a little bit of a divot there where it's not falling down into that little um, nut that has the holes in it to suck it up. I was having to shake the sandblaster to get it to slide down in there because at one point I was just blowing air on it. Uh, so I definitely will probably take out the grate. Um, that way I can just take my other hand and push it and make sure it stays clumped up down inside there. I don't know if maybe I don't have enough abrasive in there or whatnot, but I mean, all in all, I am very pleased. I think this thing was like right at a hundred bucks, uh, which is cheaper than the one at Harbor Freight, so I can't complain. I am happy it did exactly what I was looking for it to do, so I mean, you couldn't be happier. Let's take a quick look at what this finish looks like clear coated we'll go. and we're just using a crystal clear enamel I like to use this when I clear coat my products alright that looks okay gives it that grayscale kind of look to it not too unhappy with that it doesn't when you wire wheel it you get a little more metal to it and everything uh, but I, I like that you know it gives it a clean look you can definitely I like the fact that you know it's you don't get spots of scale and gunk left up underneath here um, but I like this look I can definitely see if I get a good clean forging if I get a good oh, I tell you what if I get a good clean forging on a knife leaving that gray scale kind of um, finish to it I think will look kind of cool so anyway all right guys well I'm glad you followed me along on here I hope you liked the little trying out crickets thing uh, I like I said I like doing stuff like that so but y'all have a blessed day, and I will see y'all on the next one.